You know me, man, me in cafeteria. No, me, he, he, like, he, like, I, I, you too. You know me, man, me in cafeteria. He, 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 like, he, he, like, I, you too. Not me, I'll be put a boom, big boy, and I. Not me, he, he, like, he, like, I, I, you too. You know me, man, me in cafeteria. He, 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 like, he, he, like, I, you too, and not me, I'll be put a boom, big boy, and I. Long me, he like, I want to move for you. Very little. Oh, I'm 
ใช่เป็นเป็นเป็นตัวนี้เราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราแล้วปิดยังไงอ่ะน้องดีหมีมีพี่เข้าอยู่นะจ๊ะนี่แหละออกออกจากตรงนี้ก่อนดูน้องดูแหละแม่ที่มาเลยที่นี่ใช้อะไรใช้อะไรใช้ซูซูที่กินเดินติ้งติ้งออกยังไงเจ็บจ้าจับเด็กอู้ยี่ลูกนี้มันก็พูดตรงจะบอกคุณพ่อแต่อุดมการณ์เกิดว่าเป็นว่าเป็นที่สมัยนั้นแหละไอ้ยูเมนต์ฟรอมเมนต์บาริสกรุ๊ปโอเคเอ้ยเมนต์ฟรอมเมนต์บาริสกรุ๊ปพักนี้ยังไงโอเอสทีใช่ไหมใช่ไหมโอเอสทีแม่คุณตาโคสิคเตอร์ปัญหาบาร์มีสองปีนี้นะมีเอ็นเออาร์ก็เลยจะเรียกตัวซีรีส์ตัวใช่ปะ S E R I E S ปะใช่ใช่ถูกปะถูกโอเคซูมไหนเอ่ยแชร์ไหนนะแชร์ไหนช่วยไหนแชร์เอานี่ออกก่อนก็ได้อันที่อีกแชร์อุ้ยเออโอเคอาเด็กสามีเชื่อโอ้ยเชื่อโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเค
Uh, good afternoon once again. Today our talk will be on our recent result titled a resolving computation algorithm for solving monotone inclusion problems with applications. Uh, this is one of our most uh, yes. most recent results. Here is the outline of our talk for today. In the first section, we'll give a brief introduction. The second section has to do with a brief uh, literature review on what has been done then we'll give our main results, which we call our contributions, then followed by some numerical implementations and illustrations. Lastly, we shall pose some important problems which our colleagues may consider in this future. Many problems arising in various fields of science and engineering can be modeled as an inclusion of the form one where A is a monotone map on a real Hilbert space. In fact, consider, for example, the differential inclusion problem two, which describes many phenomena that generate, many physical phenomena that generates energy over time. Observe that at equilibrium state, this system no longer depends on time and hence it is zero, so we have that the inclusion problem two reduces to the inclusion problem one. Hence, solutions of this inclusion problem one in this case corresponds to the so correspond to the dynamical state of the system described in two. In general, this a fundamental problem in the study of monotone operators on real Hilbert spaces is the following: find u in H such that u is a zero of A. Many Authors have proposed several iterative algorithms for approximating solutions of problem three due to the nature of A, which is nonlinear. One of the early methods proposed by, for solving problem three is the celebrated proximal point algorithm, which was introduced by Martinet. On the real Hilbert space H, for maximal monotone operator A, the proximal point algorithm is an iterative algorithm that starts at the point u1 in H and generates iteratively the sequence un by solving the recursive equation four, where lambda n is a sequence of positive real numbers. Martinet proved with convergence of the sequence generated by algorithm four under some con under suitable conditions on this control parameter, lambda n. Observe that. The proximal point algorithm involves the computation of the resolvent operator, which is this inverse i plus lambda a inverse at each step of the iteration process. So to implement this algorithm, one is required to compute this inverse at each step. Observe that if a is nonlinear or a matrix of higher dimension, computing this inverse might incur high computational cost. So to address the problem raised in remark one, some, research, some researchers decompose the operator A as sum of two operators from which the simpler decomposition, i.e. the leap will be used to compute this resolvent. In general, the problem takes the format of problem five, which is to find U in H, H being a real Hilbert space such that U is a zero of K plus F, where in most cases, K is assumed to be either alpha inverse strongly monotone or Lipschitz continuous, while F is maximal monotone. The need for this decomposition arises naturally in applications. It's not just for the sake of mathematics that we do this composition. We can also find something like this in application. 
Consider, for example, the lasso problem, which is problem six, which can be used to restore a sparse signal from the observation model seven. Observe that by setting K to be the gradient of this operator, LX minus B naught squared, and F to be the soft differential, this, uh, this lasso problem is a favorite solutions of this uh, inclusion problem five will be equivalent to the sparse signal, which was described in this model seven. One of the early methods used for approximating solutions of problem five is the forward backward algorithm, which was introduced by Pasti and studied extensively by many authors. On a real Hilbert space eight, the forward backward algorithm for maximal monotone operators K and F is an iterative procedure that starts at the point x1 in h and generates iteratively the sequence xn in h by solving the recursive equation h. First, he proved that if k is alpha inverse strongly monotone, i.e. k satisfies this inequality, and lambda n satisfies these inequalities, then the sequence generated by the forward backward algorithm converges weakly to a solution of problem five. Then noted that this requirement on the operator K rules out some important class of operators in applications. To dispense with the alpha inverse from monotonicity assumption on K, using the idea of the extra gradient method of Popelevic for monotone variational inequalities, then introduced algorithm nine and the setting of real Hilbert spaces. Under the assumption that F is maximal monotone and K is monotone Lipschitz, then group with convergence of the sequence generated by uh, the algorithm nine to a solution of the inclusion problem five. The strongly convergent algorithms are more preferable in applications. Takahashi et al. used the idea of Halpin type approximation technique to introduce algorithm 10 and the setting of real Hilbert spaces. Under the assumption that F is maximal monotone, K is alpha inverse strongly monotone. K is alpha inverse strongly monotone. Takahashi et al. proved that the sequence generated by the algorithm 10 converges strongly to a solution of the inclusion problem five. We remark here that the proximal point algorithm and the, the forward backward algorithm and there are modifications that guarantee strong convergence still involve the computation operator at each step of the iteration process. Sidhu may argue that by splitting these operators or decomposing them as sum of two operators, the problem of computing resolving has not been addressed fully. He then posed the following question. Can an iteration, can an iteration process be developed which will not involve the computation of this resolvent at each step of the iteration process and which will guarantee strong convergence to a solution of zero in AU. This question was answered in the affirmative by Tsidume under boundedness restriction on the operator A. Later, during my PhD, we were able to dispense with the boundedness requirement on this, but in the theorem of Tsidume. So now looking at the models arising from image restoration, signal processing, and machine learning, they come as some of two operators. It is natural to ask, can a resolvent-free computational alternative of the forward backward algorithm be developed that will guarantee strong convergence to a solution of the inclusion problem? So we are able to introduce this algorithm 11 and the setting of real Hilbert space. Observe that algorithm 11 does not require computation of that resolvent operator at any step of the iteration process. And we are able to establish strong convergence of the sequence generated by algorithm 11 under Lipschitz continuity on K and F to be maximal monotone and bounded. And also, these control parameters alpha n and theta n 
satisfying some appropriate conditions. So now, since there are many algorithms in the literature, we try to compare with the classical ones. First, the forward backward algorithm, which we are given an alternative of it. The second algorithm, which is an improvement of the forward backward algorithm, and Takahashi et al. algorithm, which guarantees strong convergence. So in R, we consider this well-known uh, constructive set value maximal monotone operator, which we call FH, which is defined from a monotone operator on R. We consider K to be this. And if you observe the solution set of this is minus one. We choose our control parameters this way. And under the, using a tolerance of 10 to power minus eight, or maximum number of iterations n to be great to be 200, we obtain the following results. Observe that in this table, all the algorithms failed to convert before the maximum number of iterations was exhausted. However, you can see that the approximation using our algorithm is much closer to the solution compared to other algorithms. We can see this more clearly graphically. You can see our algorithm is the one in blue, while the algorithm, the forward backward algorithm, and same algorithm and Takahashi's algorithm are the ones in red. So you can see that uh, the solutions appears to be chaotic around the solution. It is going up and down, up and down, up and down around the solution. This is because it is due to the nature of the function f which is set by the, we can see where the solution exists is on an interval. So this is why we have this chaotic solution around chaotic uh, behavior of the IFIT around the solution. Next, we consider an example on a real Hilbert, on the classical real Hilbert space, which is big L2 of zero one. We consider F to be this nonlinear function, which we can, compute the resolvent easily this way. We consider K to be this. Observe that the solution set is the singleton zero, S of T equals to zero. So using these control parameters and using a stopping criteria of 10 to the power eight or maximum number of equations N to be 15, we obtain the following results. Observe that our uh, algorithm eight, nine, 10, fail to satisfy the stopping criteria before the maximum number of iterations was exhausted, while our proposed algorithm satisfied the maximum number of iterations before, satisfied the stopping criteria before the maximum number of iterations was exhausted. So if you look at the graph, for the first few iterations, the sequence generated the uh, algorithm was moving away from the solution. You can see it's going up. However, it later took a turn and supersede those of the forward backward algorithm, Stein's algorithm, and Takahashi's algorithm. We have uh, now we give application to image restoration. Our interest is on this uh, classic on the classical image restoration problem uh, mentioned a lot in this lab, so we don't need to go over it again. In summary, given an original image that undergoes a certain degradation, how can we restore this image from the degraded observation of it? So in the literature, several authors have shown that the convex minimization problem arising from image restoration can be transformed as an inclusion of problem of the form as an inclusion in the form of problem five, which we just saw. So interested readers may see any of these papers for this formulation. We use our proposed algorithm 11, algorithm eight, which is the forward backward algorithm, thanks algorithm nine, and Takahashi et al's algorithm to restore some personal images degraded by motion block and random noise. So in the experiments, we consider uh, Ying's image, which we represent by Y, uh, us image, which we represent by D, my, my picture, which we represent by A, and Professor Holmes' picture, which is P. So we degrade the image using this math block, math, uh, this motion 
motion blur function in MATLAB, we added random noise and setting our control parameters to be this, we obtained these results. So in this, uh, in this figure, the first column contains the original images. The second column is the degraded images using motion blur and random noise. The third column is the images restored using the fourth backward algorithm. The fourth image, the fourth column contains images restored using sex algorithm. The fifth column are images restored using Takahashi et al. algorithm. While in the last column, we have the images restored using our proposed algorithm. You can see from these restored images, our uh, algorithm gave a better restoration. However, if you have color blindness and you can see clearly, there is a powerful tool which is used to measure the quality of a restored image. That tool is called SNR, which means signal to noise ratio, and it's computed using this formula. In the next table, we illustrate the SNR values for the restored images in the previous figure. Note that using this performance metric, the higher the SNR, higher SNR value indicates better restoration. So now you can see in this table, for Yin's image, the fourth backward algorithm has SNR value of 42.02. Same with the same algorithm. Takahashi et al's algorithm has SNR value of 38.86. While our proposed algorithm have a standard value of 45.44. So you can see for Ying's image, our algorithm will give the best restoration when compared to these three algorithms. Also, same is the case for Duan Kamon's image, my image, and that of Ho. We make the following concluding remarks. In this talk, an alternative algorithm to complement the existing forward backward algorithm and its modification for approximating solutions of the inclusion problem type is presented. This our proposed algorithm is just to complement the existing one. We are not saying throw away the forward backward algorithm. It has been used severally in the literature, but however, in the case where you cannot use it or it's difficult to use, our algorithm can come in to play. A key and interesting property of the new algorithm is the fact that it does not involve the computation of this resolvent at any step of the iteration process. Computing this inverse is a shortcoming of the forward backward algorithm and its modification. A practical example is in the reformulation of the lasso problem as inclusion problem five. You can see when in the problem, we normally take F which is the uh, set value maximal monotone to be the sub differential of the L1 regularization term. So if you try to compute I plus lambda F inverse, you will get this implicit function. You know, even mathematically, handling implicit function is not easy. Talk more of implementing it on the computer. So in a case where one gets stuck with such problem, our algorithm can come in place so as an alternative of the forward backward. However, some researchers have also tried to avoid this computation by using proximity operator. This also goes back to uh, solving another convex minimization problem, but our algorithm does not require that. Finally, from the numerical simulations presented, our proposed algorithm 11 appears to be competitive and promising, as you can see in the examples we considered. So the following, the following are interesting questions, which if one can answer them, they will lead to a research. In the literature, Lawrence and Fox and Columziak et al. incorporated acceleration strategies. By acceleration strategies here, I mean either the initial as an extrapolate, adding the initial extrapolation term or using relaxation acceleration strategy. So they incorporated these acceleration strategies in the forward backward algorithm and the forward backward type algorithm, respectively, and showed in their papers that these acceleration strategies improve the performance of the existing forward backward algorithm. 
a good question to answer will be, what will be the performance of the accelerated version of the new algorithm 11, which we just introduced in comparison with these ones in the literature? Several authors have extended as considered extensions and generalizations of the forward backward algorithm and its modifications to Banach spaces, either to involve aggressive operators or monotone operators. A good problem to consider is, is it possible to extend our theorem to Banach spaces to involve either aggressive or monotone operators? Also, Takahashi and Sal introduced a hybrid modification of the forward backward algorithm whose solutions are in addition to being zero of some of two operators, they are also fixed points of non-expansive operators. A natural question would be, can similar modification be done for our algorithm? Can you make it to also as a hybrid such that the zero will also be a fixed point of some non-expansive type algorithm? So with the emergence of this new algorithm and looking at the literature on forward backward algorithm and its modifications, there are many directions to explore. Here are some of our references. Thank you. Thank you very much for this wonderful talk. Uh, there is also no other question. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. In example one, remember the problem we are solving is we are trying to get a zero of this function, right? We are trying to get a point Q in H such that uh, K of Q plus F of Q is equal to zero, right? So now in this case, our function F is defined this way, this wise, and K is defined this way. So now, what is k plus f using this function? We will have one. Sorry, zero should be this. Zero is included in this inclusion. So what is the first case when x is greater than two? Remember our k of x is x plus one for any x in r. So when x is greater than two, f takes this side. 2x plus 3, and k is x plus 1. So for the first case, we will have what? k plus f at x will be what? This side, 3x plus 4, right? For which x? For x greater or equal to 2. For the next case, when x lies between minus 1 and 2, f takes the side 7. Y k still remains x plus one. So what do we have? We'll have x plus eight, right? For minus one less than x, x less or equals to less than two. In this case, it's when x is equals to minus one, k will be what? Minus one plus one, zero, right? So we don't have uh this interval which is minus four to seven when x is equal to minus one the last case is when x is less than minus one we we'll have what k plus x this will be four x four x right for x less than minus one so our problem is to find a point u, right? Such that zero will be in k plus f of u. So now look at this set. Is zero here? For any x greater or equals to two, we don't have zero in this set. Same for this set. But if x is equals to minus one, we have zero in this set. So that is why we say the solution set is 
the single exon minus one. This was how we got the solution. Any question? Any question? The degraded. No. Yeah, for this case, the problem we are considering for image restoration problem, there are two types. There is known, uh, known the blurring and the noising problem, and unknown the noising and the blurring problem. This one is for the known. You know the noise, you know the the blur function, then you restore. The other one is unknown. If you don't know that one, you use machine learning approach. You train a model using machine learning. After training it, then you pass in this uh, degraded image. If it is among the ones it know, it can restore. Otherwise, it will show you no results. This one is for known the blurring and the noising problem. Where you know the blur and noise, you can use our algorithm. Yeah, if you don't know, yeah, there are methods. Yeah, yeah, there are. There are methods for that. Boundedness restriction yes. is required in the proof of our oh. We require the operator to oh. come. So the name of the computation of the disturbance. Yeah. In the forward backward algorithm, you have you have the resolvent. In the proximal point algorithm, you have the resolvent. Yes. So CDMA was able to remove the resolvent in proximal point algorithm. And we also saw that in applications, the operators are coming as two sub. Apart from the fact that the forward backward has resolvent in it, we also see in applications the operators come as sum of two functions. So it is we now decide to consider: is it possible for us to remove this resolvent in the forward backward algorithm? Like I showed you in one of the short is, is this or the forward backward algorithm is this and our algorithm take care of this because you don't need to use this in this function. Oh, oh yes uh, thank you for that another question here is uh, this kind of sum of two operators yes. as the factors of the application you can also be handled using one operator exactly right so what is so special in giving two operators is there any significant difference in handling this problem with one operator or handling it with, uh, with two operators? Is there any significant difference that you observe? 
handling this as a single operator yes. or as two operators. Yes. It's just the way the model comes arise. Oh, so it is not in the yes, if it is still with uh from the one operator of the and two operators of the give data of points. Is it right? I don't get the question. Oh, what I mean is uh, like I writing this as taking this to be yeah. the two, like if this is F and this is G, yeah. take the F plus G as E yeah. and see what happens. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Maybe that's the only thing you get. Like, the and uh, I don't know from the comparison of uh, Quality of the recovery measure. Yes. You mentioned that if one has problem with the eyes and there are some kind of uh, effort from there, yes. And you make use of S and R. Is this the only method for the quality comparison? No, there are other methods like PS and R, the ISNR, the SSIM. Yeah, so other that it's just a choice. We can decide to choose any. Oh, so it has not been established one of the methods No, it has there's no result that says maybe if you have an algorithm whose restoration using SNR is better, if you change the metric, you might get something else. I have not seen something. Thank you very much. This is actually very interesting because we have it many cases. In fact, especially these days that people are studying finite operations and possibly infinite operations, you could do one which at the end of equation, any number of resolvent operations. But with this kind of algorithms, uh, one can get rid of all the maximum problem in this, and it will reduce the computation of cost. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Okay. Okay, I just have one question. From the picture, we need to know for you to know which I'm going to install the uh very good image, right? Yes. But you have the SNR to look at and see that. What are going to is what do you think is responsible for the data performance of that in this sense? Is it the algorithm itself? Okay, because it is from what you say is trying to avoid the two different Is it that that makes the algorithm performance then always be when you go Uh, I think I may have to investigate that because what I just did was to use a control but the control parameters for this one and use the same for the ones that have resolved because in the forward backward all of them they involve this one. What is this one? This lambda and Okay. All the algorithms they involve the resolvent appears here and it is with this lambda. Why well, mine does not have this? So I don't know if this is what is the reason for the better performance or if it is the control parameters. Mm -hmm. The parameters do not satisfy the same parameters, so they cannot be the same. You can see this. Yeah. Yes. For your own case, you don't want to use the data to take Yes. For your own case, you don't want to use the data to take it. Yeah. I think it's good if you can do like a security and see which, what makes your algorithm better. Is it because you don't want to use the data to take it? Or what is your algorithm? Who is going to be like? Thank you. I will look at that. This is
Which one? Yeah, one. Yes, that was part of the center plan, right? <laughs> okay, uh, so this is a very nice book. Right. Normally, in the application, you know, for the events, the problem for me is that when he talks, then it becomes a confidence for the time, by the day, so by the last of the we don't have the problem. We don't have the problem. So that means the uh, version is defined very fast. So what about the two people you use? Uh, which one the population? No, no, no. But what can you say about the population? Right? I didn't check for the population. No, I didn't check for the population. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You need to fetch one. Yeah, and this one, you don't have. So I think it would be nice to do all the time. All the time will be way better than the other one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I think I'll, this refer is actually still on the So I can still push. Yeah, I can still add it. I can still add it. And also the metrics also, because I think there are a lot of things there for the other Sometimes the SNR will not show you the real quality. That is why in the paper they did like three or four different things. You can ask the paper to see that. Or central control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Second is K plus seven, right? Mm. So I just compute. Just you mean the second for the what did I think as F? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the second. Oh, okay. You know, in the last of in for forward and backward, what we are trying to avoid is this. Yeah. With the use this threshold and yeah. to avoid computing this. Yeah. So in my own case, mm -hmm. after taking this to the gradient and sub differential, mm -hmm. you just take K and you plug it into this. And this step here, if you are going. This will be gradient. This K is the gradient. So you don't have any I don't have. Yeah. I have sub differential. F is the sub differential. But I don't compute that uh, I plot the resolvent. It's what I don't compute. The setting is the same. You take gradients and solve the pressure, no change. But in forward backward, after doing that, you still have to do an extra work to compute the resolvent, yeah. which is not here. That is why I'm telling you, putting the time is very important. I will consider that. Yeah. 
I think the handling of animalization problem is a particular case, which means when we develop an algorithm, it will always solve minimization problem of this form. But if you have the inclusion problem, it's more general. You can solve other problems in addition to this. So, so, so for this particular problem, is there any kind of game of uh, No, I don't know. Can you go to the graph? Not this one. Yes. No. The next one. Yes. No. Why do you explain it? You may mention the reason why it's not going to happen. Yes. Can you find it? You can see the zero for this solution okay. is lying in this interval. So F will be taking values for any value of X in this interval. Okay. It can go to zero. So that is why it is like with the code. We take them values from minus four Yeah. Until it hits zero. Once it hits zero, it will stop. Because at zero is where you get exactly zero. Other places it will keep going. Okay, from your algorithm, you keep a point from F next time. Let's say you take uh, the XN, or let's say ZN from FXN, yes. right? Are you going to choose that point, or you are allowed to choose that choose in random? No, you have to choose. So, so it's not random choice. No, it depends on you. I have one question for the so starting with this graph, of course I wanted to put on that and you to like uh this is just the best mention graph to this kind of like that is what I put on the yeah. So I'm wondering if that is the same why this graph is it no, it's also yeah, it's also for the field. But the job yeah, is less than. Yeah, this is because in the next example, you can see the convergence is not the same. So it is shrinking. If they are coming close to zero, the IP is. It is jumping, but it's coming down. So, so it's kind of like you are going to try to minimize uh, it is coming, it, it doesn't minimize the dumping, but it's coming closer, faster than, than the other one. And it seems like the other one is ever coming. No, they hit the clock. I think the other one from the table, you can see you have 0 0.02. So you cannot resolve it. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. It goes up. <laughs> Why? Maybe that needs to be explained. No, they started from four. It's not going down. It's not going down smoothly. It is going down. If you check all the ones that have maybe two point something, it is coming down from that two point something. If you check those with zero point zero two, for example, it is also coming down. It is jumping due to the nature of the. Earth. 
As we change the F, you see the solution was smooth. So as we change the function. It will eventually go because we have and uh this one i mean the yeah yes so by what is by what is the kind of what you are what is that? Next one. Yeah. This one. Where you find that it was? Yeah, you can put this numeric uh, on paper. On paper. Yeah. If you take the sub differential of norm and Rn, it is x over norm of x for x not zero, and it is the interval zero one or the closed board zero one if x is zero. So using that, you can compute this. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I, would, I would like to suggest uh, you check many detail points. Uh, you check uh, the person for any What you presented here? Only one. Only one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Okay. Question online. Hello. Is, is there any question from online? Yes, there is. Okay. okay. Kindly go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the nice presentation, Dr. Abubakar. My question is on this particular slide. Uh, you said some algorithm did not obtain the solution before the maximum iteration reach. What do you did think? not satisfy the stopping criteria. Stopping criteria, sorry. Before the start, before the maximum iteration reach. What do yes. you think if we increase the uh, max, number of maximum iteration? What do you think will happen? They will eventually satisfy it. However, our own has already satisfied at 15. So they will have more number of iterations when compared to our own. And for yeah, potential time also. But based on some experiment, I have observed that the in most cases, the higher the number of iteration, the better the quality. Did you observe that in your running of algorithm? For this one? No, in general, in general, did you observe anything of such? Like the more the number of iteration before satisfying the stepping criteria, the better the quality of restoration. That means if you are restoring image or signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have more SNR value when you have higher number of iteration. Yeah. Yes, I observed that also. So which, which one should we take uh, better in terms of the metric of comparison? Should we take the quality or the number of iteration? Because it's, diff it's difficult to get better quality with less number of iteration. This is my observation. I don't have any theory to back it up. Yeah, I understand what you are saying. We are comparing these three algorithms based on this stopping criterion. For example, in this one, we have 15. How does this, uh, the iterates, the sequence generated by the algorithm, how do they perform for the first 15 iterations? Mm -hmm. You can see for the first 15 iteration here, the first algorithm, you have 
zero point zero one one nine. Yes. Remember the stopping criteria is ten raised to power minus eight. You yes. see, this is so far from there. Yes. The next one is zero point zero three nine four. It's so far because we have ten point ten raised to power minus eight. Hmm. Algorithm ten has seven point four seven. Uh, times 10 raised to power minus four. You see, mm. this is coming closer. Mm. Maybe in the next five or 10 iterations, it will reach the solution. Mm. While our own already satisfied. Yeah. So you so can, my, if you increase the number of iteration, our yes. own will not continue because it will stop. So if I, if I understand you, the, what is of interest to you here is the number of iteration. Because for the stopping criteria to be satisfied. Yes. Not, not the quality of restoration. For this example, we are just approximating. The uh, approximate solution to zero. Okay. Oh, this oh, is the approximate solution, oh, 0. Okay. 0.0000. Increasing the, uh, the number of iteration will make it go up more. I see, I see, I see, I see. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Adi. Is there any question from the online? Okay, if there is no question, uh, I think we need to thank Dr. Abakar for this wonderful talk. And that should be the end of uh, this talk. We move to the next speaker. Thank you very much, Dr. I hope I'll stop live and stop live and